Hello, my name is Mr. Pendergrass, and I am the elementary music teacher at Fairmount Park. Thank you for joining me for this trumpet lesson. Just like you, I'm at home, and I am making this video in my office. This is a trumpet lesson, and we are going to do a lesson that focuses on how to practice using the brass method. I'll talk about some trumpet maintenance tips to keep your instrument in good working order, and then we'll talk about some practice tips to help you with a song excerpt from a movie, The Imperial March from Star Wars. And then finally, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction to one of my all-time favorite trumpet players, Wynton Marsalis. So for this lesson, you're gonna need your trumpet, a paper to take notes or a pencil, and if you have some valve oil, bring that along too. I'll give you a moment to gather your materials. The first thing we want to do is tell you about a word that you can use to help you think about practicing. The word is brass, like what your trumpet is made out of. And each letter in the word brass stands for a concept or idea we will use to help you practice. You can see from the slide there the different ones, and we'll be going over some of those in a moment. Before we start playing, I want to share with you some sayings I use with my students. I've realized after 20 years of teaching instruments, they sometimes just fly out of my mouth without any explanation and may be confusing or just weird. So the first one is, you are the boss of your instrument. What do I mean by this? It means you have the tools, brain power, and stuff to play your instrument. At this stage, I'm assuming you have a good foundation to play your trumpet. It doesn't play you. It's a mental mindset, really. I sometimes see students pick up their instruments and think, I hope it works. I hope I don't make a mistake. Oh no, what if a weird sound comes out? I can't do this. Well, if you start off with the you are the boss of your instrument attitude, I really believe you will have more success. Does it mean you will play your instrument perfectly every time? No but it's a way to begin with confidence and courage, traits every good musician must have to succeed. The second one is fill your instrument with warm, fast air. I'm sure you've heard your teacher say, blow more air, come on, play it louder. But what does that mean? Let me quickly explain by giving you two examples of blowing air or using your breath. The first one, is the type of breath you might use to blow at a candle. Not too much, definitely cold and very wimpy. This is a shallow breath, not the kind you want to use when you're playing your trumpet. The second type of breath is one you would use to fog a mirror or say a car window to create condensation and then write your initials. You know what I mean. It's warm, fast air that is created by expanding your diaphragm and pushing with your... Oh, wait a minute. Too much information. Here, just, just try it. But notice what happens to your stomach just before you create that breath. Right? It, it expands and you push out to this warm, fast air. This is the air you want to get the best sound on your trumpet. So now, you know a couple of my sayings. Let's play. We're just going to use our mouthpiece to start. So first, I like to take my mouthpiece and just do some buzzes. Let's try some sirens where we go up and down. You're just really trying to get these muscles in your lips to cooperate. After you do a bunch of buzzes, pick a song that you're working on, maybe just a little section of it. Mary had a little lamb. I won't do the whole thing, but we'll start it. So you go ahead and try some of those. Do some buzzes, do some sirens up and down, and then do a song, just with your mouthpiece.
Now, before we put our mouthpiece on our trumpet to play, I want to go over some basic trumpet maintenance you can do at home to keep your trumpet in good working order. First, rinse out your mouthpiece. Take a look inside there. It might be kind of gross. If you have a mouthpiece brush, use it. If not, rinse it out with warm water and soap and get rid of any gunk that may be in there. Second, don't play after eating. Well, make sure you rinse your mouth and brush your teeth or any food particles you have in your mouth will get stuck in your mouthpiece and other parts of your instrument. That's just gross. Third, after playing for a while, you may hear a gurgle gurgle sound when you play. This is water and, well, spit that has built up inside the tubing of your trumpet. This is the time to get rid of that liquid by using your water key. Some people call them spit valves. But don't do this on your floor. Yuck! Do it over an old towel or a sink. Nobody wants to step on your trumpet water. Ew. Just find a suitable place, press the water key, and it'll flow out. Now, how to oil your valves. We really want our valves to move up and down smoothly. We do this by coating the valves with valve oil, but don't use too much. And the way I'm going to show you is easy and safe. I recommend you don't take the valves out of your trumpet to oil them. You might put them back in wrong, creating a blockage, then you won't be able to play. Trust me, unless you know a professional trumpet player or have a teacher in the room that's done this before, you can really create some problems by removing your valves. So here's what you do. Grab your valve oil, carefully take off the cap, careful not to squeeze the bottle, turn your trumpet upside down and drop one or two drops in the holes at the bottom of each valve. Just one or two. Don't, don't squeeze a whole bunch in there. Then with your trumpet still upside down, press each valve a couple of times. This will get the oil to lubricate the valve. Finally, never, never, never set your trumpet down on the floor by the bell, not even for a second. Don't put it on a chair. Don't set it on your couch. When your trumpet is not in use, put it back in your case and close it. That's the safest place for it to be. All right, mouthpiece back on your trumpet. Let's play some warm-ups. Check out this helpful warm-up from the trumpet book we use in Seattle schools. You'll notice that we don't have to press down any vowels for this warm-up. We will just be moving our lips and tonguing each note. As you tongue each note to get your tongue in the right spot, imagine you're spitting a watermelon seed through your trumpet. If you combine this with the feeling of warm, fast air I mentioned earlier, hopefully it will sound like this. <laughs> Trying to tongue each note and have that warm, fast air behind. Try it with me. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> give you a chance to try that on your own. Okay, we are ready to practice an excerpt. That means a short part of a bigger song called Imperial March from Star Wars. Now here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. 
Now, I know this is a tricky piece, so I want to help you identify and practice certain sections that may be tricky. This is the repetition part of that brass method. And as I look at this, I see a couple of places that will take some work. First, the highest note of the song, that B flat in measure four, it's a high note. It requires that warm, fast air and some tight lips. Second, the section immediately following is also tricky. We're going from pretty high to pretty low, so what can we do? Well, I like to create a small practice exercise for these tricky parts. So maybe I would just start in that third measure, because I know I need a lot of air, and maybe I would do this. And then I do it again. Here's how you can tell if you're really doing good repetitious practice. Your parents say, would you please stop playing that over and over again? Now I'm kind of joking, but you really want to practice it over and over. You want to practice it many times right and not a few times right and a bunch of times wrong. So I would do that part by itself over and over again. Then maybe I would add the next part down to the D flat there. That's the one, two, three note. That's a pretty low note on the trumpet and uses a lot of vowels. So maybe I would do this part. Put it on a loop, I call it, over and over again. Try it out. Will you get this the first time you play it? Probably not. Chunk it out into little bits. Make practice motifs of parts of the song that you're not getting. Don't try to play the whole thing each time and then you get it right once and go, yay, and put your trumpet away and you're done. You gotta break it down into little bits. So take your time and do a little practice right now. So thank you for making music with me today. But before I go, I, I want to tell you about one of my favorite trumpet players. And also, I really want to encourage you to try to find recordings of trumpet players that sound really good. There's a lot of professional trumpet players out there. But when you can find a trumpet player that you like, listen to them. Watch how they play. I mean, that is why you picked up the trumpet in the first place. Probably somebody in your family played it. Maybe you heard somebody play it on a TV show or in a song, and you're like, that's the instrument for me. Keep doing that, especially now when you have time and have to stay at home. So if you've never heard of this trumpet player, I want you to check him out. I'm just going to show you a picture of him here really quickly, and then a short excerpt of him playing some really cool jazz. <laughs> This is Wynton Marsalis, and Wynton Marsalis is the only trumpet player to have won a Grammy playing classical trumpet and jazz. I think you will be inspired by the way he plays. He plays with such feeling and heart, and he has his own family and his own kids, and he understands what it's like to practice and play music. So check out Wynton Marsalis. He's the greatest. Keep practicing. Take your time. Chunk your parts out and use that warm, fast air that we talked about, and you will become a better trumpet player each day.